Hi everyone, buyers agent Jay Pace here for Providence Property Group for the month that was August 2024. For those of you new to the channel, we are a national buyers agency with offices in Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth. We believe that there's always an opportunity somewhere. We help you to be a player and not a spectator in your wealth journey, focusing on quality properties over quantity. Operating through three decades, our experience will ensure no sleepless nights worrying about property. On this channel, we talk about all things property, but most importantly, I read the news and separate the fact from the fiction so you don't have to. So let's get straight into it. The team has been flat out for another record month of purchases. Uh, we did make some time though to go into the studio and record three hours of content for you. Now this is lots of juicy and, and raw stuff came from this and it's really just our experience as buyers agents. Some of those videos have already hit the YouTube channel um, where we talk about subjects like property versus shares, does procrastination come with a cost, revealing the biggest myths in property investing, is technology changing how we buy property, and you've just got three guys that have been doing this for a very long time but just kind of chat about it. We don't agree on everything, but definitely what we do have is a lot of shared experience. If you like what you've seen here and you want to be kept in the know with the Australian property market, make sure you like this video and hit that subscribe button. It helps the algorithm. In most asset classes, the future is largely unknown. Like in stocks, the futures market, derivatives, bonds, cryptocurrency, gold, oil, and other commodities. Sure, property definitely has its unknowns too, but there are five certainties for our housing market right now, and I'd like to go through them one by one. I'm gonna give you further explanation, but basically they are inflation, and we believe that it's gonna stick around longer than the RBA would most likely want it to. Interest rates will eventually fall. The scarcity of dwellings for both purchases and rent will not go away anytime soon. Rents will continue to rise. And lastly, good demographics and strong population growth will keep fueling demand for housing. Those are the five things I wanna discuss during this video. They're all inevitable. So many people do kind of try to predict the future and most of them fail. Um, but these five profitable, you know, real estate kind of tailwinds for investors are as assured as you basically forgetting someone's name right after they tell it to you, which I'm uh, guilty of very often. So let's just have a quick chat and go through this together. Firstly, sticky inflation. We are edging closer and closer to the RBA's inflation target range. However, the return to this target is taking longer than expected. And we can see there, I'll just move my head out of the way, we can see there are two to 3% target range and we can see CPI at about 3.8%, all right? Interest rates. So interest rates are most likely going to go down. Um, when interest rates were in 2022 April, they were at 0.1 of a percent, okay? The average Australian mortgage has seen annual repayments increase by about $16,788. That's a huge increase for Australian budgets. A panel of 31 lending economists assembled by the conversation from the ABC basically sees no cut in interest rates before the middle of the year, okay? Which we've already passed now. We're in September and only basically a slight cut in December. I actually don't think that's gonna happen. I don't think we're gonna see a cut in December. But they do believe enough to kind of trim maybe just about $55 off that $16,788 increase per month, which is nothing, right? And the average forecast is for the Reserve Bank from all these people, so that's what this chart shows you, all the kind of different forecasts and then the average. The average forecast is for the Reserve Bank to delay cutting its rate, its cash rate, um, keeping it near 4.35% until at least the middle of this year, which has already passed, and then cutting it to 4.2% by December this year, which I don't think is gonna happen, then 3.6% by December 2025, I think that's more likely, and then 3.4% by December 2026, which I think is quite likely. So we will see what happens there. There's more evidence that the big four are expecting rate cuts. You've got CBA, Westpac, NAB. So 
whether or not it actually happens is one story. How that how the idea of it happening is going to affect consumer sentiment is another. Number three is that supply is not keeping up with demand. So over the year to June 2024, 163,317 dwellings were approved. That's 18.9% below the decade average. And this is the lowest annual count since the year to March 2013. This graphic shows total listings change from the equivalent period last year. And the total listings are sitting notably higher across Victoria, Tasmania, um, than this time last year. Now, this data is about two months old. The, the core logic's been slow with putting out the data, but this reflects definitely a softer market conditions where slower sales times are leading to an accumulation of total stock. Uh, at the other end of the spectrum, places like WA, where I was just in WA for about a week, um, a couple of weeks ago, and WA listings are far lower than they were last year. And that's reflecting very high demand relative to the rate of new listings added to that market. Again, what we can see here, number four, now I'm talking about rents. And we can see the annual change in rents here. Obviously, WA's had the highest increase for the past 12 months at 12.6% for houses and also for units at 13.1. So across the combined capitals, the increase for the past 12 months has been about 8%. For Perth, for the past 12 months, it's been 12.7%. So this is another reason why people are obviously being attracted to different capital cities, because we've had 13 interest rate rises since May 2022, and people are trying to look at properties that are gonna minimize their holding cost, allowing them to stay in the market for a longer term. Number five, and this is the last one. In January, Australia's population tipped over 27 million people. This is around 18 years earlier than the milestone was originally predicted. And this annual growth is 41% larger than the previous record in 2009. So during the month of January, we welcomed 55,000 new Australians to the country. And that's the most people that we've ever accepted in one month, according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics. And this data, I've gone through this before, but I did some further calculations. Demographersid.com.au, visit their site, got some great stuff on there. They estimated that Australia's population will increase by 9.2 million new people by 2046, okay? Now, I know 2046 is a while away, but the vast majority of that 9.4 million, 67% in fact, of that population increase will actually reside in the four major capitals. Melbourne will get 23% of that 67% of that 9.2 million. 18% will go to Sydney, 14% to Brisbane, and 12% to Perth. And I just did the numbers quickly on, on all of them, but I'll just give you Perth as an example. 1.1 million new Perth residents is a 55.6% increase in their current population. So it's quite a significant change for these capital cities. Also, and this was so surprising to me, Australia's population is highly urbanized. That's not the bit that's surprising. With a high concentration of people living along the southeastern coastline from kind of southeast Queensland to Victoria. And cities in Australia continue to reign supreme, growing faster than regional areas overall. That doesn't surprise me because a lot of people that watch this channel know that I'm not a fan of regional areas. But vital infrastructure like transportation, housing, education, healthcare, employment opportunities, they're all major draw cards. And despite kind of numerous attempts um, that we've seen throughout Australia's history to get the population decentralized from the capital cities, it's unlikely. People are gonna just keep living there. We're gonna start to see a more vertical living society, people living on top of each other, than people actually spreading out, I, I wager. Now, while Sydney and Melbourne are nearly twice as big as the next largest capital city, which is Brisbane, the rate of change in 2023 actually shows Perth as the fastest growing. Okay, so the, that was the part that was surprising to me is that this chart shows you annual change in capital city populations from 2002 to 2023, so 21 years. Perth had the largest growth since 2002 of 56.6%. Brisbane has a close second place at 55.8. I was just very surprised by that. I didn't think Perth was going to actually beat everybody out. And by, by 2036, Melbourne 
is projected to be Australia's largest capital city. Not surprising given that Sydney has a considerable surplus of people moving to live in other places in Australia. Now, I've been saying for quite some time, keep watching Melbourne. And I truly believe that it's gonna be the next one to pop after Perth starts to cool down, probably over the next two to five years when we start to see that. And you'll start seeing me talk more and more about Melbourne, and I'll start referencing this video in a couple of years time saying, I told you so, Melbourne was gonna burn. Okay, let's look at the hedonic home value index for that last month. And what we can see here is we can see again, Perth 2% increase, followed by Adelaide at 1.4, Brisbane at 1.1. For the year so far, annual performance, 24.4% increase for Perth. Pretty crazy. Uh, then followed, followed by Brisbane at 15.0%, which is quite far away actually. Uh, and then Adelaide nipping at Brisbane's heels at 14.9. And look at that average for combined capitals in green there. The average kind of performance across the combined capitals is 7.1. So you've had Brisbane and Adelaide double that, and then you've had Perth done even better at 24.4. Pretty amazing. Now, here is an update on housing values since the onset of COVID in March 2020 and relative to peak levels. And you can see there, and I'm not going to go through all of them, just the main ones for me, Sydney 28.8% or 263000 dollars increase. Melbourne, the worst performer, 10%, 10.1, 71,196 up, and it's currently 4.9% below the peak of the market, which it hit in March, 2022. Every time someone asks me, I wish I had a time machine, I would have bought this property at that price, Melbourne is screaming to you and saying, I'm your time machine right now. Um, Brisbane, 65.1% or 344,000, Adelaide, 67.3%, or 318,000, and Perth 72.5%, or 330,000. Pretty significant increases. Brisbane, Adelaide, and Perth obviously shooting the lights out. Amazingly, again, if you listened to the media, if you listened to the experts, COVID, the whole market was gonna crash 30 to 50 to 60%. Old mate Harry Dent is back in the news again. I saw him on a current affair or something like that the other day talking about how Sydney properties are gonna crash. This guy said that in 2017. Um, this guy said that um, in 2010. This guy said that a million times. And again, um, this market has just pushed through. Now let's look at the speed check with the Australian capital cities with our rolling 12 month movement. And I've done the numbers again from the 31st of August, 2023 to the 31st of August, 2024. And we can see Perth still performing well and still positive over the month before. I've got to say the numbers were only slightly more positive. So just for that month, Perth's kind of done better, but not as good as it was doing before. Again, just for that month, Brisbane's actually gone backwards a little bit and Adelaide also backwards, just slowing down. Um, I'm curious to see what they're gonna do next month. But Perth up $192,000 for the year, $3,700 per week. Brisbane up $131,000 for the year, $2,500 a week. Adelaide, $118,000 for the year, $2,300 per week. Sydney still dropping. $59,000 for the year or $1,100 per week. Um, your interest on a average property purchase price in Sydney of $1.18 million at 6.5% would be more than the capital growth you would have received over the past 12 months. Not very attractive for investors, I don't think at the moment. Melbourne, even worse, as I said, you know, it's, it's screaming at me a little bit. It's down $8,000 for the year so far. Now it's currently in negative territory. So that's down $150 per week for the past 12 months. This chart actually shows the median dwelling value um, across the combined capitals. And, and what it does show right now is the gap between Sydney and Melbourne dwelling values has not been this wide since 1999, all right? That was my first year of high school. That's how old I am. So when I see things like this, uh, again, it's just little taps just on my shoulder, you know, the angel and the devil, and they're both telling me, maybe Melbourne's gonna become a good one to buy soon, Jay. So um, yeah. Uh, 
This is new loans and commitments, and investor borrowing is up 49.2% since January 2023 to July 2024. Property investors borrowing is close to record levels after increasing for the 14th time in 18 months. After investors signed up for a record $11.762 billion of home loans in January 2022, volumes steadily declined, bottoming out at about $7.849 billion in January 2023. But since then, investor borrowing has trended up, reaching $11.708 billion in July 2024. So according to the latest data from the ABS, that trend is continuing. And during the same period, owner-occupier borrowing has also increased by 22.5%. So again, this is what I was saying before about consumer sentiment, about what's everybody else actually feeling and where are they driving the market. Um, now this, I realized just then that this uh, slide's a little bit messy because I was. this is the old data behind it, this is the new data in front of it, and I was hoping to get a better looking chart, but instead I just had a, a, a table, so forgive me. Um, but basically in August, the number of, uh, of national residential properties listed um, has risen again slightly. The yearly change, I mean, this is each individual capital city that you have there, but nationally um, it's up 11.1%, monthly up 7.9%. So we are seeing more listings come onto the market, but again, um, and I wish I had the five year average updated, but I don't. Um, as of last month, or sorry, the month before July, it was still 17.3% down. So we'd have to see a significant increase for us to just to get back to the normal levels that we saw five years ago. Low rental vacancy rates. Well, the capital city rental vacancy rates are at still 1.3%. And like I've been saying for quite some time, the average over the past 10 years is 3%. So we're still about 60% below um, that average at the moment, which again is probably one of the reasons why uh, rents are continuing to be so strong. The gross rental yields that we are seeing across the combined capitals are still dropping. Okay, for certain capital cities. Uh, average 3.5% rental yield. Melbourne, again, is actually starting to increase um, from you know 3.2% now up to 3.7% over the past couple of months, because as the property price drops, the rental yield starts to increase. Melbourne, Brisbane, and Adelaide are now all tied for rental yield at 3.7%, which is quite interesting. Also, considering the average or the median dwelling value in Brisbane and Adelaide and Perth is now higher than the median dwelling value in Melbourne. So again, that data is just something that I'm focusing a lot more on at the moment. I'm not ready yet, so I know I'm making it sound like I'm really excited about Melbourne. I'm not ready yet to jump in. I'm just, my toes in the water. I'm just checking it out for people, that's all. Let's talk about interest rates. Um, actually, we can skip this because they haven't updated interest rates yet, so we'll leave that alone. Let's look at some recent purchases yeah, let's look at some recent purchases that we've done over the past uh, month or two now. We picked this house up for one of our clients recently. They were looking for a high cash flow property with low maintenance and owner occupier appeal. And for us, you know, this one definitely ticked all of the boxes. We found this beautiful double brick house on a large 540 square meter block. Um, and although the house was built in 1998, the internals have all been very recently modernized. You can see pendant lights, ducted air conditioning, down lights, etc. Um, like they've done a really nice job modernizing it, but still got that um, charm that it had originally. They have fully updated things like the bathroom. That's all completely brand new. Uh, the outdoor entertainment area has been turned into a bit of an oasis. You know, they've got... Um, the black rocks here and they've got the moss wall and everything it's quite lovely like really nice big underground uh, undercover area the house is 500 meters from the shops it's 3k's from the beach the property also has a one bedroom granny flat with its own private side access which is just here on the left hand side there so that's also something that really supercharged the rental yield for this client and these are just a few little happy snaps of inside the granny flat, which is basically brand new. They did a really good job with the breakfast bench there and everything to kind of give it a bit more space, the lounge room, even the bedroom, lots of natural light. They just did a really good job. This property is 37 kilometers northwest of Perth CBD. Um, purchase price was $810,000. Rental estimate, conservative, $900 per week or a 5.8% rental yield, which is very attractive. Um, and that's on a 0% deposit. 
A 10% deposit or a 15% deposit on this, and this thing's basically neutral or just positively geared. So why do we love this? Granny flat strategy, dual income available, which contributes to achieving a greater rental yield, obviously owner-occupier appeal, and it was recently renovated. So we would hope that the maintenance for this property would also be low. This was another off-market property that my team was able to secure the other month. Um, these are photos from 2015. Um, so that's why there's a for sale sign there, because obviously if it's off market, there shouldn't be a for sale sign. Uh, but um, the photos aren't fantastic because they're old photos from 2015. But as you would appreciate, we took our own professional photos and sent them to the client for them to review. Um, as I said, photos don't really do it justice, but it's nice and lots of natural light. The design was very um, simple and easy. So we know when we see stuff like this, it's investor quality. We know that we're gonna get something where our clients are going to hold onto the asset. It's not gonna cost them a lot. It's gonna be something that's gonna be easy for them to manage. That's what this client wanted. It's nice and bright, three bedroom, two bathroom, two car space house. And everyone knows that I love relay and access for a property. It just makes the front facade a lot nicer and, and neater. Um, this property, again, distance to the CBD, 28 kilometers um, northwest of Perth CBD, price $580,000. Um, now we know this would fetch 600K on the market. We know that. So we believe we definitely got it under, under market value. Rental estimate, 600 bucks a week or 5.4% rental yield. Why do we love this purchase? We secured this property off market and under market value and with painting actually included in the contract. So they're gonna fully paint this property inside for us before our client um, takes possession of it, which is just fantastic. Um, it was built in 2015, it's on a 265 square meter block, low maintenance, above average rental yield, and it's got owner-occupier appeal. Now let's have a quick look at uh, Sydney. So we bought this property for a lovely couple who were looking to secure a Sydney home for their growing family. And we found what we were looking for in the suburb of Newtown. And the approach to owner-occupiers purchasing is very different from investment because there's more factors based on feelings and emotions over data and practicality. You really need to love the property that you're going to live in for most people. The husband's actually a chef, really nice guy, and he said that he needed plenty of kitchen space. So we tried to get something where that would be adequate for him. Um, it wasn't you know, the dream kitchen, I'm sure, but he definitely compromised and we were pretty happy with it. Uh, the property had recently been modernized. The internals were quite beautiful. The finishes were lovely high ceilings, natural lights, balconies. The house ticked all the boxes for this family. Um, beautiful backyard, plenty of space. Of course, this isn't an investment property, but let's kind of look at the numbers anyway. 4.5K southwest of Sydney CBD, $1,880,000. Rental estimate would be $900 per week. Again, very low, and this is why the rental yields in Sydney aren't fantastic, 2.4%. Why do we love this property? It's renovated, three bedroom house, good bones, large block, um, close to shops and amenities with owner-occupier appeal and development potential. So very, very happy with this. Last one I'll show you is Brisbane. Um, so our Brisbane team secured this property for an interstate client and she was looking to minimize tax. Uh, holding costs, she wanted very low and ultimately she wanted to increase her wealth through growth of property asset. And the team found this property. Now this property, and, and typically we don't buy investment properties with pools in them or we try to sh shy away, but the client loved this as well. This property was part of a display village in a new estate. And when I say a new estate, it's not very far from Brisbane CBD. It's in a, it's in a growth corridor. We've got, we know all the development applications that have been approved, all the money that's going in this, a marina that's been um, approved, everything, this is gonna go nuts. And we know because the buyer's agent that did this definitely has his fingers in all the right pies when it comes to finding out this data. No expense was definitely spared to make this property appeal to the masses. Um, it was listed at 920, but the vendors were in a rush to sell because they were moving to Perth. So we actually ended up getting this property through our relationship with the agent at $850,000. We were very, very happy with this. And so was the client. The valuation looks great on this property. So timing was really everything. Again, Distance from CBD is about 38 kilometers from the CBD, um, $850,000, $800 per week or 4.89%. To get that on a brand new property, to get a rental yield like that is quite crazy because usually, again, it would have been up there in the 900s. 
Why do we love this property? Brand new, master built display home, five kilometers from the shopping center, train station. It's 60 Ks to the, to the Sunshine Coast to the north and 38 Ks north of Brisbane CBD. Land prices have increased by 7% just this year, just land, buying land, right? And we know that after they break ground on some of these projects that we're gonna see a 20% increase in some of those prices pretty, pretty quickly. So this area with the infrastructure, it's gonna do great. Remember, we can't help you until you commit, and once you commit, we won't let you fail. So we're bringing two things together here, your desire to build wealth and our 18 years of experience buying properties for our clients. So for more than three decades, we've helped Australians open a life of opportunity through real estate, giving them the future that they want, and we buy unique quality assets in areas uh, where demand outpaces supply. So we focus on properties that appeal to much larger groups of people. Um, so we want owner occupiers, 70% of buyers, not just the investors at 30%. And we buy in the right capital cities at the right time, guided by the economic property cycle. This is why even though we've been so heavy on Perth and we're very happy with that, I'm already starting to talk about another capital city because you must move with the cycle, okay? Um, there are a lot of buyers agents that are local heroes and only buy in their areas. The problem is, is that that narrow mindedness keeps them buying even when you shouldn't be buying in that particular market and you should move on, all right? But we buy the property which is genuinely suited to your situation, which will act as a springboard to your next wealth building stage. And this is how top property performers buy. This is how they build wealth. Uh, I wanna thank you for your time today and I will see you next month.